I'm going to shake here with my review, finally, of the Nerf Evader. This is from the clear series that's in the modulus line. And key notes are, this is a flywheel powered blaster that features a side magwell and LED lights controlled by a front, a front trigger. And it comes with one little barrel attachment which does not have lights in it. However, there are lights positioned and this activates them by hitting a button. So what, what stands this apart from everything else that Nerf has produced that is basically a variation of the Strife? Well, for one, it's pretty obvious, it's clear. And the LEDs that are incorporated into it, along with a very nice, comfortable form factor. But I will get on to a few things, including the performance of it, my opinions on it, and then we'll break down what can be done to it, maybe on the modding side. Now, for me personally, this is one of the more unique Strife reshells that they've done. And for all intents and purposes, that's what it is. It's a semi-automatic, meaning you pull the rev trigger and then it'll fire one dart every time that you pull the main trigger. It does have, of course, those nice LED lights and it has a good top rail as well as a stock attachment point and fairly obviously a barrel attachment point. And for me personally, this is as a, I'm ambidextrous with some things, but predominantly right-handed, I love side mag wells. I love the rampage and the radiator, the radiator, the Raider before it, but I actually love this. It makes for me personally very easy and smooth mag changes. Now, left-handed person, again, that's going to be a little more awkward, but still doable. You have to rotate the blaster around to get that if you're left-handed, and I'll admit that that would be a little more of an ergonomic quirk for those of us who are lefties, but for me, as a predominantly right-handed person, that magwell works pretty good. Now, it is a fairly tight magwell, so you need to make sure that you align that pro magazine properly to get it in there. And that's about it for actual features. It's mostly all clear, including a translucent trigger and forward trigger that, or call it the activation trigger for the lights. And even the side rail here is translucent orange. And for those of you who haven't noticed, yeah, there is a bottom rail as well as a sling attachment point down here, which is, again, neat, plus the sling attachment point up here, as well as up here. So you can run a two-point sling here, a single-point sling that way, single-point sling from the bottom, or a two-point sling from the bottom and the top, and then a stock attachment point, which makes me think immediately of the Worker uh, clear versions that came out for the Prophecy. Now, Worker makes a number of clear stocks that would go really nicely with this. And moving on to performance, this thing is, like again, it's a strife shell. On mine, with an average of darts, as you can see here, I've got a mixture of a take them as you get them kind of darts, uh, and I averaged about 71 feet per second. Uh, if you want the exact, it was 70.8 over a, a group of 50 shots fired. And I've been using this for quite a while now, and it has foam built up on the flywheel, so it's grabbing nicer than it did when it was stock. And straight out of the package, when I pulled it straight out of the package, I was getting an average of about 69 feet per second. Now, with a little bit more foam built up on it, I'm actually pushing that up a little bit higher. And for those of you who aren't used to flywheels and are more of a springer person like I am, once you get a little foam from, I mean, the flywheels do actually dig out some foam from your darts, but once you get a little bit built up, the flywheels will actually grab the darts a little bit better and you get a more, more fling to it. So you will actually gain a little feet per second slightly like one or two in my case um, but you will gain a little bit of traction and that's why upgrading your flywheels even if you're not going to make any other changes grab, grabbing a better set of flywheels can help with even a stock blaster but I did get all the way up now after having this thing out for a few months I have been able to get 70.8 so round it up to 71 and that's firing a mixture of darts which I'm going to go ahead and do a little quick firing to show you And that is firing everything from a Busby Precise Pros, Long Distance Darts, Adventure Force Waffle Tips, uh, Accu Strikes, Nerf Elites, and 
I have even been able to get this thing to reliably feed X shot darts and they're a little shorter so this thing has zero problems feeding whatever darts you're going to throw in it including some aftermarket darts um, but basically zero complaints and it's a very comfortable blaster the price is all over I mean this thing was retailing for, for their, I think 30 to 35 dollars depending on what store you bought it at but looking at an average price of 30 dollars and basically it's the performance you expect from nerf no it's not going to be a class leading this actually in the world of flywheelers like me, with me absolutely loving the the dart zone adventure force v-twin coming down to this feels weak <laughs> but for a magazine fed semi-automatic flywheeler it, it gives you the performance that you expect out of nerf so that's neither a positive or negative they're falling behind in performance terms compared to everybody else on the market but it's what you expect you expect a 70 feet per second and it hits that at least but the main thing is it's comfortable has the stock point has plenty of rails you got bottom top side and a barrel attachment point so if you want to accessorize like crazy you can and for me at least very comfortable ergonomics now again the only complaint is is that it's it's nerf so it's 70 feet per second stock but i personally didn't buy this to leave it stock i wanted to try it and review it over a period of time to see how well i liked it because i'm not the biggest strife fan in the world so i wanted to give this lots of time and get a feel for it and i actually like it equivalent to my modulus ecs 10 which tends to be my favorite flywheel blaster before getting my hands on a couple of brutes because the Busby Brute's just awesome. But this thing is at least completely workable in my opinion. And I've seen some people do some nice mods. I personally am going to modify this. I'm not a flywheel guy, but this will be one that I do. Because it's, I don't know, it just feels kind of special. I like the clear shell. I could envision, I want to put some like super bright red or orange flywheels in there that you can see. I want to put in like a special cage that you can see. I'm going to leave, I'll probably leave the LEDs alone. I, I like the green. I think it's cool. Um, I'm going to upgrade basically all the internals. I want to see this thing hit, you know, at least like 125 feet per second. So yeah, I'm going to go to LiPo and I'll do all that, rewire it and new cage, new wheels. And we'll see what I can make of it. But in stock form, I actually think it's, I prefer it over Strife by far. The the comfort is there. The magwell for me, although mine's a little tight, it's it's. I like the side magazine well. I do. My one complaint is the trigger, and it's not that it's an uncomfortable trigger. My trigger, which was noted in my uh, worker and Busby dart test video, I ha I didn't even realize it until he until the guy showed me. I think I think it was a viewer of mine named Tim. He actually mentioned that it seemed like I was having some barrel pull every time that I fired. And I thought at first it was just my head cam moving. And I went back and reviewed and reviewed. And no, it's this trigger. It, it's, got enough, it's got enough pull to it, at least mine. Mine does not move smoothly. It's got some drag there. And it was actually causing my barrel to jump just a little bit every time. I hadn't even realized it until he pointed it out. And like I said, I I actually thought it was the uh, I actually thought it was my head cam just moving because in some videos my head cam shakes a little bit. But no, he he was right. It, there is some movement there, and it's due to the trigger. I actually came back out in my workshop and tried this thing out to see if I could replicate it, and sure enough, there, it's the trigger on mine is not very smooth. But hey, when I mod it, that'll be all taken care of in the end. But this is another shape of my review of the Nerf Modulus Evader. I do think this is a very worthy flywheel blaster and that's coming from somebody who's not who is a not the biggest nerf fan and b not even a flywheel guy and this thing's going to stay in my arsenal and will get modified because i like it enough that i want to see what i can do with it so take that as you will but this is mongoose jake with my review of the modulus ecs evader as i call it they call this the ecs 12 but modulus evader we'll just skip all the acronyms but if you do want to purchase one, I will try to find the best link at the time and put it in the description below. Again, I hope you enjoyed this review. Thanks for watching.